so I have a confession to make. For the past couple days or so, I've been pretty obsessed with this craft called the Light Paper Cut Shadow Box something or other. It's got a long name. But it's basically this box that's got a bunch of really intricately cut paper, whether it's like an image or like a, a scenery that's got a light shown upon it from the back and you can just have this beautiful visual um, in this box. As you can see, it's scrolling past on the screen. Oh, it's so, it's so beautiful. I really do love it. And so I wanted to create my own version of it. A very simple version that you could create at home and this is what I came up with and this is my experimentation. So for this experiment, I needed cereal boxes. I ended up using two of them. I had one just in case I ended up messing up and needed to fix something. But uh, I've got my special K here too. Um, you're going to use one for the back and one for the front. Um, yes, this is going to be in two pieces that you will tape together and uh, you're going to be doing some cutting of these. Um, next, you are not going to need cardstock. I will explain why you should not be using cardstock for this project uh, due to my own experimentation. But you will be needing some scissors, a ruler, you're also going to need a lot of printer paper, just regular thin printer paper, along with a plastic lid and some paint brushes. Now this is optional, again I wanted to experiment with painting the inside of the box to see if that would change the colors a little bit, but it really didn't, so it's really optional. But if you're going to do it, I recommend Under the Sea Colors, which you can obtain using blue, black, or white paint. I'm going to be setting that off to the side. And then I'm going to be using a pencil just to do some regular markings, and you're also going to need an X-Acto knife and a cutting board. Now I also use a kitchen cutting board just so uh, I could lay out the full paper without bending it. You're also going to want to get out some tape along with a light source. I ended up using the tea lights uh, but you're just going to need some sort of form of like light source in this case. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out a gigantic circle on the first cereal box. You're going to want to center this and a good way to get a circle when you're trying to cut through in, uh, the middle of something is to cut out a little triangle with your X-Acto knife and then follow up with your X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors. Um, and make sure to leave the tiniest edge as you can see in this picture right here just so it's not falling off the edge. You're also going to want to cut out a rectangle on the back of the box leaving like the tiniest bit of a rim just to attach paper on later. And I'm really gesturing emphatically here but I have no idea what I'm saying so just follow the previous instructions I guess. <laughs> Next you're gonna be taking your second box and you're be gonna be creating an identical rectangle on the next box. It doesn't have to be exact but it has to be similar and you're also gonna to want to tape up the edges to give structural support. Then once you've cut that out you're gonna to want to punch some holes in the back of the box so you can poke your tea lights through when you're done. To create the pattern, you're going to be cutting circles and you're going to be creating a wave design with your X-Acto knife. I just did this by swirling it a little bit. And um, it's really not that hard. You just want to make sure that you're leaving that nice edge around it. That's really clean. Um, now the problem with using cardstock is that you can't see the light through the cardstock. It's too thick. <laughs> so I uh, don't have any video of that. but. Yes, I had to go to back to the drawing board and I basically had to use the printer paper doing the same process, which I'll kind of go into more detail now, but you know. Um, basically, the way you're going to do this is you're going to make sure that your pattern is thicker and um, wider than the previous circle before it. So you're going to just slowly be making smaller waved circles with the center cut out versus cutting around it, you're going to cut in it, if that makes sense. And you just want to make sure to be very careful with your X-Acto knife, although I stabbed myself with a pencil with this project, not the X-Acto knife. Just, just be careful in general, please. Just please be careful. Yeah. The general life skill. Okay, so now that you've got your first layer done, you're going to be trimming just the first layer so it fits in the box. This is the only layer you're going to be cutting, and you're going to be taping this straight to the flat bottom of the box, so it's right up against the opening. Every layer after this, you're going to be bending the sides. You're just going to be folding the sides just a little bit, 
and you're going to be taping them to the sides of the cereal box, the sides, the flaps of the paper to the sides of the cereal box, and in a way that you create space between each layer. So you're going to be moving each layer back slowly up and up the box. You can see me kind of pulling it up here, trying to fit that in. It takes some practice. Obviously, this is not my best take, but um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. And you want to make sure that you create space between each of your paper layers because that's what gives it the really cool effect. Um, so you want to make sure that is what you're doing. And you want to make sure it's firm. And once you're, you get to the end, you're just going to be taping over the last piece. And then you're going to need one sheet of paper to go between the two boxes. You're going to be smooshing the two boxes together so the two rectangles meet. And you're going to be taping it, gluing it together, and you're going to be sticking tea lights through the back. Um, and you're going to be painting over that if you'd like. You can paint the box black to make it look nice. And you can just see that you can turn it on and off and take out the tea lights if you have the time or space. And here you go. Here is your finished paper cut. I'm not going to say the whole thing again. It's really long, but this looks good, I think. And I think you are light paper cut shadow box alternate title for this type of project coming soon. Um, and I hope you guys liked it. Um, it was a lot of fun, a lot of frustration in figuring out how to do this project, especially with the materials that I was using. Um, but I think it turned out pretty good. Not perfect, but there's always room for improvement and maybe uh, another video in the future. Um, if you like this craft, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye! <laughs>